Alright, this video is on solving quadratic equations using the square root property. And before we get to the actual property, let's think about something like this. We're going to solve this equation, x squared equals 25. Now remember what it means to solve an equation. It means we're looking for um, all the numbers we can plug in for x here that will make this a true statement. Well, hopefully we can see that if x is 5, we get a true statement because 5 squared is 25. But are there any other numbers that we could also plug in for x here that when we square it we get 25? Yeah, that's right, x equals negative 5 is also a solution. There are two solutions to this equation. If you take 5 and plug it in for x, you get a true statement. If you take negative 5 and plug it in for x, you get a true statement. And so we need to make note that we do have two solutions. So here's kind of the idea on this little square root property. Um, I'm going to view this as something squared equals a number. Okay, so here's the definition. Square root property. If we let k just be any real number, that's what this notation means, this fancy looking r, uh, it's just a set of real numbers, then if we have something squared equals a real number, then we can take the square root of both sides. But when we do that, you're going to get just the square root of, of x squared, which is just x on the left side, and you're going to get the square root of k on the right side. But whenever we take the square root of both sides, we have to remember to put the plus or minus sign in in order to account for um, the two solutions that we have. Remember back here we had two solutions, 5 and negative 5. All right. So that's the most common error is we'll realize to take the square root of both sides because you have something squared equals a number, but we'll forget the plus or minus uh, symbol that we need to put in there to denote that we have two solutions. All right, all right. So here's some examples. Solve 2y squared equals 12. Now I think it's best to uh, isolate the y squared since it's the only variable you have running around. You don't have a, a y term running around. Uh, just isolate the y squared first. Uh, and to do that, we divide both sides by 2, and so we get y squared equals 6. And now notice that we have something squared equals a number. That's all you're looking for. Do I have something squared equals a real number? If we do, then we can take the square root of both sides. The square root of the left side would just be y, and the square root of the right side would be the square root of 6, but we cannot forget to put the plus or minus out in front to denote that we have two solutions. This is shorthand notation to say y could be positive square root of 6, or y is equal to a negative the square root of 6. And either one of those numbers that you take and plug in up here for y will give you a true statement. All right, let's try another one, a little longer one. All right, so this, again, fits into the idea that we have something squared equals a real number. That's all you're looking for. Do I have something squared equals a real number? If we do, then we can literally take the square root of both sides. Maybe I'll write them in this time. So you take the square root of 2x minus 1 squared equals, and we cannot forget the plus or minus, the square root of negative 7. That's the line we just we left out over here on the left example. All right, so take the square root of both sides. Now the square root of 2x minus 1 squared, the square root and the square undo each other, and you're just left with 2x minus 1. All right, now what about the square root of negative 7? All right, well, that's what type of a number? Right, it's going to end up being an imaginary number. And so we have the square root of 7 is just the square root of 7, but the square root of negative 1, well, that's i. So i times the square root of 7 is what the square root of negative 7 goes to. And now we just take this equation and isolate x. So I'm going to write it this way. Everybody see we're going to add 1 to both sides first. So we have 2x. And I'm going to write the 1 out here in front of the plus or minus symbol. Okay, like such. It's just easier to read. So you read this as 2x equals 1 plus or minus i radical 7. And now divide both sides by 2, and you look like 1 plus or minus i radical 7 divided by 2. And there are two numbers here. 
Everybody see that we have 1 plus i radical 7, all of that divided by 2. And we have 1 minus i radical 7, all divided by 2. So this is just shorthand notation uh, of writing both those solutions at the same time when you, use, when you use the little plus or minus symbol. But there are two solutions to this particular equation. If you take either one of those numbers and plug them in for x here, and a little bit of work, you can show that it's going to end up being a true statement. All right, so that's the idea on the square root property. Remember, we're just looking for something squared equals a real number. And then you just take the square root of both sides and don't forget the plus or minus. All right, that's it. Study well, uh, and let me know if you have any questions.